important topics of uh, uh, this uh, biofertilizer production. I uh, I think so. Uh, you might be knowing what is the definition of microorganisms or what is the definition of biofertilizers. After the Green Revolution, we have started to use these biofertilizers uh, uh, very frequently in crop production. All type of crops, uh, we can uh, use these uh, biofertilizers uh, as an alternative source as well as additional source for the uh, plant growth promotion. The definition uh, you might be knowing only we are using the beneficial live microorganisms. Actually, previously our forefathers or farming community, we are, they are uh, uh, they will be uh, using so many um, organic cultivation methods and they used to crop rotate with the pulse crops. What is the importance of pulse crops in crop rotation means uh, the pulse crops may have the facilitate uh, microorganisms to fix the nitrogen. In case of uh, crop rotation, uh, farmers are adopted to crop rotate with the pulse crops because of that we can fix the nitrogen from the atmosphere. But uh, before, uh, uh, after coming if, uh, the green revolution technologies, farmers are mostly depending upon the chemical fertilizers. Because of that, the whatever the beneficial microflora present in the soil, it is going to disappear because of the uses of uh, high doses of fertilizers and um, high doses of pesticides and fungicides. There is a, a need to improve the microbial biodiversity in the soil. That's why uh, now we are talking, uh, uh, this is the season of a second green revolution. Here we are more concentrating on the microorganisms or organic cultivation process to improve the soil health conditions. Uh, I'm not going to talk all these um, because uh, they have given me the topic only mass production of biofertilizers and um, what are the quality control measures we have to take for the production of biofertilizers. Actually, biofertilizers have so many advantages. These are the renewable sources. Uh, we can, whatever the microorganisms available in the soil, we are going to take the microbes from the soil and we will isolate from the soil and we will characterize in the laboratory and we will go, uh, we will go for artificial mass multiplication in the laboratory. We are going to increase the size of the microbial load in the um, a laboratory and we are producing as a biofertilizers. That is the story of biofertilizers, what we are going to uh, see in the biofertilizer production. Actually, when we are uh, going to study about these biofertilizers, these are the low cost and renewable resources, and these are the naturally available microorganisms we are using as a biofertilizers. And uh, the most important factor when we use these biofertilizers, it, it improves the soil health and soil physical conditions and uh, it in turn improves the soil fertility and crop productivity of the plants and they are ideal input for uh, starting organic farming and now uh, uh, because of the health situations uh, everybody talking about the organic cultivation and natural farming uh, when they are having the small holdings of the land they are ready to use these biofertilizers as an alternative sources for the chemical fertilizers if we use in the organic farming or in any farming these biofertilizers, it maintains the soil health and it minimizes the environmental pollution because with the chemical fertilizers, mostly the chemical fertilizers are uh, prepared from the petroleum products. That's why it will give the so much of uh, soil uh, pollution as well as environmental pollution. When we talk about these microorganisms, we, it will be naturally available and um, it will increase the efficacy in the soil and um, the pollution is very less when compared to the chemical fertilizers and uh, it will uh, the last uh, nothing but the least uh, it will reduce the uses of chemical fertilizers when we talk about the only organic fertilizers or only chemical fertilizers always as a scientific community we are uh, recommending to the farmer go for the integrated um, nutrient management if the farmer can afford 50% of organic fertilizers and 50% of chemical fertilizers, it is the advantageous to the farmer to maintain the soil health and it may not lead to the 
degradation of the soil carbon in the soil that's why we are recommending if the farmer uh, use 50 percentage of organic fertilizers and 50 percentage of chemical fertilizers like npk or micronutrients it will be the best advisable suitable recommendation for cultivation of any crop but uh, farmers if they want to cultivate the fruits and uh, vegetables if they go for the organic cultivation if they have the facility to accommodate all 100 percent of organic fertilizers then it will be better to grow for uh, uh, to go for the organic cultivation mostly in india we have the small holdings, uh, minimum of uh, 1.5 acres to uh, maximum of 10 acres or small holdings are there, small farmers. If they are going to cultivate the vegetables for half an acre, a half acre or um, one acre, then uh, they can uh, use these organic fertilizers. If they are going for the large uh, uh, area, uh, it may be difficult to procure all the organic fertilizers. Uh, that's why we can supplement 50% of chemical fertilizers and we, we can recommend to the farmer to use these uh, chemical uh, biofertilizers in that 50%. And then uh, commercial history of uh, biofertilizers. Uh, during uh, 1895, uh, 1895 um, we used to uh, import all the biofertilizers from different countries. They have launched in uh, 1895 nitrogen. Uh, this is the biofertilizer we used to import from the uh, foreign country. But uh, the first uh, uh, in India, we have started the commercial production of biofertilizers that is rhizobium in uh, 1956 by Dr. Vian Joshi from uh, New Delhi in IRI. Uh, he uh, has given the production procedures for biofertilizers production. Uh, mainly, we used to produce only rhizobium initially in um, nine, 1956, but uh, now we have started using different types of uh, biofertilizers. Uh, we have extended and exploring to um, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria, potassium solubilizing bacteria, zinc solubilizing bacteria. There are different types of uh, biofertilizers are there, but commercially we have started only during uh, 1956 by Dr. V. N. Joshi. This is the uh, uh, history of biofertilizers. Um, then uh, now uh, uh, the National Biofertilizer Development Center, uh, Ghaziabad, uh, they are uh, doing intensive uh, research uh, in um, uh, organic fertilization as well as the biofertilizer production. Central sector scheme, INPDB, National Project on Development and Use of Biofertilizers, uh, they are supporting so many uh, financial uh, budgeting uh, to different uh, states. And uh, they increased the budget uh, 13 lakhs to 20 lakhs per uh, production units and government play a dominant role in marketing by three ways. Uh, this biofertilizer can be marketed by all the state governments uh, via district level officers and village level workers. Um, they can procure the biofertilizers and um, they have uh, the state governments have uh, so many subsidies uh, towards these biofertilizers. Uh, they want to popularize the biofertilizers uh, to reduce the uses of chemical fertilizers. And uh, state marketing federation via cooperative bodies or cooperative societies and cooperative uh, societies formed by the farmers. They also can uh, uh, have the facility. If they have the facility, they can procure the biofertilizers and they can sell in their cooperative societies. And in um, third category, uh, the uh, uh, state agro industries or cooperation via agro service centers also, they can uh, procure the biofertilizers and they sell the they can sell the biofertilizers. They are the three um, dominant uh, places where we can find these biofertilizers uh, sale in the, um, in the country. Then if you see the uh, important biofertilizers produced by different states, mostly uh, previously they used to produce uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University. They have started in Tamil Nadu from 20 to 25 years long. Uh, they have started the biofertilizer production and um, they have a large market when compared to all the states. Uh, you can see here the productions are so high in the uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, then the um, uh, high in the Karnataka and uh, Kerala, Gujarat, and then the Maharashtra, if you find uh, the only 
uh, they are able to produce only uh, 2,925 metric tons. Uh, these are the other states uh, which can um, have the facility to sell the biofertilizers. And but now uh, it has been increased uh, when compared to the previous years because the orientation towards the organic cultivation is here increasing day by day. That's why the market facilities and the market strategies are uh, increased uh, in case of the biofertilizers. Uh, if we talk about the classification of biofertilizers, uh, different biofertilizers are there. Uh, nitrogen fixers, uh, in nitrogen fixers uh, associated to nitrogen fixing bacteria, symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria, then free living nitrogen fixing bacteria. Under symbiotic bi uh, fixing bacteria, we can uh, uh, see the azola, uh, Ajola and uh, blue green algae mostly we are recommending for the rice and um, then other biofertilizers like phosphorus solubilizing microorganisms. Uh, phosphorus solubilizing microorganisms are two uh, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria as well as phosphorus solubilizing fungi. Then uh, vascular or vascular mycorrhiza will come under the um, category of phosphorus mobilizing because um, uh, it may not have the capacity of solubilizing, only it will transport the nutrients uh, to the Mm, and uh, the phosphorus will be transported towards the mm, deeply rooted uh, crops. Uh, we can use this BAM. And we, now we are recommending to all the crops also. Then plant growth promoting rhizobacteria and uh, sulfur oxidizing and sulfur uh, uh, reducing bacteria also available in the market. And other uh, degrading organisms, uh, decomposed organisms also available in the uh, market in recent years because the orientation towards the bio uh, decomposition is increasing day by day. That's why these are the different types of uh, biofertilizers we can see in the market. Then uh, the role of biofertilizer uh, is um, uh, first, um, you can see this uh, makes available of different nutrients, uh, make the root rhizosphere more lively. And uh, this rhizosphere will be colonized by the different uh, beneficial bacteria. Growth promoting substances are produced uh, through this bacteria and uh, more root proliferation will be there and better germination because of the production of these uh, plant growth hormones. It improves the quality and quantity of uh, uh, produce or uh, crop, crop produce and improves the fertilizer use efficiency because um, uh, if we talk about the phosphorus uh, uh, use efficiency is very less. If, you, uh, if our soil is having more uh, fertilizers also, uh, more uh, phosphorus availability in the soil also. Um, that, but uh, through this chemical fertilizers, only 20% uh, can be absorbed by the plants. Remaining 80% will be uh, present in the soil itself. It will get fixed. Uh, different nutrients will get fixed. Uh, nitrogen as well as mainly phosphorus, potassium, zinc, and other micronutrients will get fixed during the crop growth period. Um, the use efficiency will be improved uh, because of the application of these biofertilizers. Then uh, if you apply these biofertilizers, it will increase tolerance towards biotic and abiotic stress. And uh, uh, it ultimately leads to improve the soil health. And uh, uh, residual effect will be high in uh, biofertilizer production, uh, biofertilizer uh, applied fields. Because when we are applying uh, biofertilizers, these are the beneficial microorganisms. Uh, it will be present in the soil itself and it will give a residual effect year by year. And um, uh, you can see uh, now uh, uh, so many different uh, formulations we can see in the biofertilizer production, carrier-based, liquid-based and bioencapsulated to improve the efficacy of these biofertilizers. Different types of formulations are present. Uh, but uh, when whatever the formulation we are going to use, these formulations should increase the shelf life uh, of the biofertilizers and it should improve the quality because when we talk about the biofertilizer production as well as usage, the quality is a main draft act because uh, so many uh, production units they are producing, but the quality is not uh, uh, proper and uh, it's not up to the mark. And that's why the quality maintenance is very important in case of uh, biofertilizer production and quality maintenance. We are going to see uh, we are going to see the presentation after uh, some time. Uh, the quality measures. These are the different products uh, available in liquid form as well as um, carrier-based form. So many products are available uh, in the market.
uh, then this is the production details of the biofertilizers. Um, uh, the biofertilizers can be produced uh, carrier based or liquid based. Uh, whatever the production procedure we are going to follow, uh, first to follow the first step uh, in the mass production of biofertilizer, we should have the mother culture. Mother culture uh, should be there. Uh, to get the mother culture, first we have to um, use uh, uh, soil. First, we can take the soil, live soil, and we can isolate the bacteria whichever we required. For example, uh, we are targeting the nitrogen fixing microorganisms, rhizobium. We can collect the root nodules of the particular crop. For example, if you want to develop the biofertilizer rhizobium uh, from the soya bean, you can collect the soya bean nodules and you can uh, surface sterilize the soya bean nodules and uh, you can uh, use these nodules, macerated solution of these nodules uh, as a uh, a sample and you can streak on the yeast extract mannitol agar medium and you will get the pure culture of the rhizobium but uh, why we are going to use the yeast extract mannitol agar medium to isolate the rhizobium agrobacterium also mostly present on uh, in the nodules sometimes uh, uh, it may be present on the roots of the legume crops that's why we may get as a contaminant uh, agrobacterium uh, to differentiate agrobacterium and uh, rhizobium, we can use these as yeast extract mannitol agar medium. It will differentiate the color of agrobacterium and rhizobium. Because of this, uh, agrobacterium and um, rhizobium will show different colors on the medium. One is uh, the rhizobium uh, will show the uh, translucent color and agrobacterium shows the pink color on the medium. Uh, then uh, we can uh, differentiate from the agrobacterium. We can collect the pure culture of rhizobium. After getting the pure, pure culture, we can test for the efficiency of nodules uh, formation and uh, fixation of nitrogen. If the particular rhizobium is uh, uh, passed through the nitrogen fixation efficiency, if it is showing the better fixation, then you can use as a mother culture. This bacteria can be um, uh, grown in the petri plate as a pure culture and you can streak in the slant. This land can be act as a mother culture for the production. Uh, then uh, whenever we are, go we are going to talk uh, about the, uh, when we are going to talk about the uh, mother culture, uh, after for mass multiplication, it may not be uh, possible to grow the bacteria on the solid media. For that purpose, always we will use for mass production only broth. Because when we use this broth, this broth will give, um, this broth will give uh, uh, optimum conditions to grow well and uh, it will give maximum population. Wait for one second. For that sake, uh, we can use slant uh, for maintenance, maintenance of mother culture. And uh, after that, this uh, mother culture can be inoculated into broth tube. Inoculated into broth tube, this broth, uh, the particular microorganism can be grown. When it reaches to the maximum population size, this broth can be five to ten percent is can be transferred to the big flask. Uh, then uh, this big flask, uh, we can allow the growth uh, after incubation two to three days or uh, each microorganism or each biofertilizer is having the different incubation periods. Then when we go for the mass multiplication, we can go for uh, two methods. One is flask method and another one is fermenter method. When we go for the flask method, uh, we can go at the maximum of uh, two liters to five liters flask we can use for mass multiplication. Then uh, in fermenter, uh, you can go for the uh, 350 liters, 500 liters or 1000 liters of fermenters. In large scale production, we can use this 
fermenters for the production. After production of this uh, mother culture in the flask, this flask mother culture can be inoculated into the fermenter. And uh, first, uh, how we are going to mass multiply? Um, when we go for the mass multiplication, first step is you have to prepare the required broth, specific broth for specific uh, organisms. This broth can be uh, prepared first, then it will get sterilized. After preparation of the broth, you can uh, uh, distribute into the flask. These flasks can be sterilized under autoclaving conditions at 121 degrees centigrade. After autoclaving, these flasks can be inoculated with the 10 percentage of mother culture, whatever we have uh, uh, mass multiplied, this will be inoculated into the actual uh, uh, flasks. And this flask can be fixed in the mechanical shaker because almost whatever the microorganisms we are going for mass multiplication in case of biofertilizers, all are aerobic organisms, rhizobium, azotobacter, Azospirillum, so microaerophilic organism, uh, then Bacillus, Pseudomonas, then all the plant growth promoting rhizobacter. Mostly, uh, we are mass, we are using in commercial production all our aerobic organisms. Aerobic organisms they need oxygen for their growth. For that purpose, uh, uh, we are going to use the mechanical checker to provide the aeration. Um, then. Uh, um, after uh, keep it in the mechanical shaker, we can give the incubation period for rhizobium. Uh, if it is, uh, if those are slow growers up to seven days, or if, you, if it is fast growers, then we can allow up to four days to grow in the um, uh, incubation period, whatever you have provided. Then after that, you have to check the level of quality or whether it has been reached maximum uh, population size, because according to the BSI standards, the population should be 10 to the power of seven colony forming units for one ml of liquid or one gram of soil. In that case, you have to check the population level. The cells can be harvested at log phase when it attains the uh, maximum uh, population size. That time you can harvest the cells. First uh, uh, step in the mass production is preparation of nutrient broth specific for specific bacteria. Then you can do the autoclaving. After that, you can inoculate. After that, <clears throat> you can inoculate um, um, this uh, uh, sterilized broth to the uh, specific organism. Then you can allow for in incubation. in flask method. When we go for the fermentation, fermenter method, first you have to prepare the broth, then you can fill with the fermenter. You have to allow uh, as um, autoclaving uh, at 121 degrees centigrade for one hour. Then um, you have to uh, cool the solution in fermenter because uh, when it reaches to the 121 degrees centigrade, you, ha you have to use some accessory uh, instruments also for fermenter. Uh, we have in our production unit air compressor to, uh, to maintain the airflow. And we have the chilling unit uh, to chill the temperatures to maintain the temperature in fermenter. Then after that, uh, when it reaches to the maximum temperature of, uh, of 40, 35 to 40 or uh, 35 degrees centigrade, you can inoculate the uh, media or broth uh, with the particular organism, uh, then you can allow for incubation. Same method we can follow in fermenter, or how we are producing in the flask method. Then after it reaches to the maximum population level at log phase, you can harvest. When we go for the uh, fermenter method, you can see here the portal will be there to collect the sample. Before starting the uh, starting collecting of the sample because you should not expose the culture to um, uh, environment it will get contaminated first you have to swipe with the alcohol you can you can wipe with the alcohol um, uh, cotton dipped into the alcohol the, you can wipe it 
this um, harvesting portal and you can collect the sample first you have to check uh, the quality as well as um, um, population level of the uh, bacteria produced in the fermenter then if you are satisfied the population is maximum reached to the 10 to the power, to the power of 10 colony forming units in 1 ml then uh, you can harvest the cells and uh, uh, further you can prepare the carrier material make it uh, available the carrier material if you are going for the carrier based biofertilizers the carrier should be um, sterilized before mixing the broth uh, multiplied broth into the carrier then the broth uh, quality will be checked uh, the next step is broth is uh, blended uh, with the sterilized carrier or uh, peat or lignite then you can pack the biofertilizers after uh, blending or after mixing you have to cure the biofertilizers it should it should reach the 30 to 40 percentage of moisture percentage under the uh, inoculation rooms only you have to cure these biofertilizers after curing you can pack the biofertilizer and um, when we are going to pack uh, when you are going to uh, use uh, for curing you have to cure the uh, this uh, biofertilizer at 25 degrees centigrade then you have to pack the biofertilizers with the certain packets only we have to pack the packet will have the certain information what is the manufacturing date what is the biofertilizer you are packing what is the maximum colony, form, colony forming units you are maintaining on the packet every uh, information you should uh, give on your packet and you can supply to the uh, farmers uh, for usage in the field uh, if the uh, if you are keeping after after uh, producing this biofertilizer packet you have to maintain the cold conditions or minimum of 25 degrees centigrade uh, when we talk about the carrier based biofertilizer the shelf life we are giving is 6 months that's why during this uh, period of uh, 6 months of storage you have to maintain uh, uh, 25 degrees centigrade uh, there only you can hold the bio uh, this uh, inoculated microorganisms will be live okay this is the mass production of uh, biofertilizer the, any biofertilizer can uh, uh, produce in this manner only simple technique uh, to know the biofertilizer uh, production in uh, mass scale how we are producing uh, milk to the curds do you know how we produce milk to curds can anybody uh, tell the steps how we can produce uh, uh, curds from milk students students are you there Hello. First, please uh, unmute yourself and you can uh, interact with the man. Yes. Can you unmute and sell, tell how we can produce the curds from the milk? Yes, students, so you please uh, unmute yourself and uh, interact with the man directly. They are typing in the chat box, ma'am. Please, ma'am. What, sir? Nobody is there in the class, or what? <laughs> no. Uh, Sreya Bharti is there. there. Yes, is there. Namdev is there. Namdev. A little bit. I am a little bit. Please unmute yourself and uh, interact with the ma'am. Yes, ma madam, <clears throat> by adding uh, lactobacillus, you can prepare. Uh, actually, when we go for the uh, curds preparation, first we will boil the milk. Yes, ma'am. Uh, while we will boil the milk? For uh, sterilization. Yes, yes, very good. Sterilization. To sterilize it. Unwanted, uh, yes, yes, unwanted microbes will be removed. Then uh, you told uh, we are going to add lactobacillus as a mother culture or inoculum to prepare the curds. Like that only same procedure we are following here for mass multiplication of biofertilizers. First we have to prepare the broth. Then we have to inoculate the particular microorganism for mass multiplication. Then after mass multiplication we can check the quality and uh, we can uh, blend with the carrier material and we can pack it. 
and we can preserve or we can release in the market. This is the process, simple process. We can go for the mass multiplication, but we should uh, ensure that uh, the quality should be maintained during the process of mass multiplication. Then uh, if uh, different uh, stages we can find in the biofertilizer production, first, uh, we have to isolate the microorganisms uh, from root nodules if we talk about the rhizobium. Then we will do the first laboratory screening of microbes uh, for plant, plant growth promotion or for nitrogen fixation. After that, we have to check with the greenhouse, uh, uh, greenhouse screening for microbes to promote the growth in potted soil. Then we have to screen for the field, field screening also, our microorganism, whatever we are going to use as a commercial produce. It should prove their efficiency in the field efficacy also. Field screening of most effective microbes in crop soil uh, for particular varieties, crop varieties and different soil types we have to examine and we have to uh, give the details uh, where we have screened, in which type of soils it will be suited. What is the pH uh, the farmer should maintain when we are using these biofertilizers? Then uh, we can uh, uh, get the pure cultures of or refinement of these inoculums or uh, microbial inoculums. Then environmental impact test and uh, substantiation of microbes we can see. Then uh, we can use the particular strain in the commercial production scale in, and uh, we can market the market in the um, uh, we can market to the farmers. This is the uh, stages of development uh, for biofertilizer production. You can, uh, from collection of soil to, uh, then we are going to release the commercial product in the market. These are the process we can follow step by step to produce the quality based biofertilizers. Uh, this is the uh, whatever I have explained uh, mass production. First, isolate the bacterial culture. Uh, this bacterial pure culture will be subculture into a nutrient broth. The cultures were grown under shaking conditions because all the microorganisms are aerobic in nature. We can maintain the temperature of 30 to 30 plus or minus 2 degrees centigrade. The culture incubate until it reaches to the maximum cells up to 10 to the power of 10 to 10 to the power of 11 quality forming units for 1 ml of uh, broth. Under optimum conditions, this population level could be attained with four to five days for rhizobium, five to seven days for azospirillum, and six to seven days for azotobacter. These are the incubation periods for a particular organism. The culture obtained in the flask is called as starter culture. This starter culture can be used for further mass multiplication in the fermenter or flask. For a large scale production, inoculum from starter culture is transferred into the large flask or fermenter and grow until required level of cells reach to the maximum population size of 10 to the power of 10 or 10 to the power of 11. Uh, we are going to produce different biofertilizers. The specific microorganism needs the specific media for growth. For rhizobium, we can use the yeast extract mannitol agar medium with Congo red dye because this Congo red dye only gives the differentiation between the rhizobium as well as agrobacterium. Then at Jospirillum, we are going to use the Dobernus malic acid broth with sodium chloride supplement. Then Astrobacter Vaximan 77 broth, Phosphobacteria, we are going to use the Picovisci broth. Then Pseudomonas, we can use the King's Pea broth. Then tricalcium phosphate uh, uh, will be supplemented in the phosphorus solubilizing microorganism screening. First, we have to prepare the appropriate uh, broth for specific bacterial inoculum in required quantity. Then inoculate with specific bacterial strain for uh, aseptic conditions. Then incubate uh, at 32 plus or minus 2 degrees centigrade for 5 to 7 days in rotary shaker to provide the aeration. Observe the growth culture and estimate the population in the starter culture. This starter culture can be used for further further production of large quantities in fermenter. Then after this, sterilized and cool well in the fermenter. Fermenter uh, inoculation can done uh, at the lock phase of culture grown in the large flask. Mostly we can go for the one to two percent of inoculum is sufficient uh, for the inoculation. 
if you, if you have any doubts, if the uh, sample is uh, reached to the um, stationary phase, that time uh, it may take uh, more uh, up to uh, five to 10 percentage inoculum also you can add uh, to improve the um, in, um, mass production well. Then cells are grown in the fermenter by providing aeration and continuous stirring in the fermenter. Then broth is checked for the population of inoculated organisms. The cells are harvested with the population load in the fermenter. It should reach to the 10 to the power of 9 cells for ml. This is 9. Uh, 10 to the power of 9 cells should be reached. Then you can harvest the uh, cells and you can mix with the carrier material. The carrier material we are going to uh, use mostly lignite can be used for the carrier based. The use of ideal carrier material is necessary for the production of good quality of biofertilizers. Before using this um, uh, carrier material, it should be uh, sterilized. Whenever we are going to select the carrier material, it should be locally available. The cost of uh, uh, carrier should be cheap or um, Mm, a, a higher, it should contain higher organic matter contained. No toxic chemical should be available in the carrier material. The water holding capacity should be more than 50 percent. And um, uh, to handle this carrier material, it should be easy process to handle and it should not cause any health issues who are going to handle. These are the characteristics of uh, carriers you have to find uh, before selecting the carrier material. Mostly we are using in our biofertilizer production unit of PZTSAU, lignite for uh, bacteria, for talc powder uh, for um, uh, fungi. You can see different types of carrier materials, uh, uh, pressmed, then uh, lignite, uh, charcoal or coconut shells or rice husk, cellulose powder or leaf menus or peat can be used as a biofertilizer bio carriers. For um, uh, based on your uh, local availability, local availability, you can choose any type of uh, carrier based by your carriers. Then these are the uh, parameters um, which we have to consider uh, while producing the biofertilizers. Uh, what are the um, base material can be carrier based? Any carrier can be used. The manufacturer should. Uh, uh, Check the quality, 10 to the power of uh, uh, 8 uh, grams for uh, carrier material or uh, 10 to the power of 7 cells for a gram of the uh, carrier, a rhizobium 10 to the power of 8 or 7, astrobacter uh, 10 to the power of 7 uh, coliforming units, azospirulum 10 to the power of 7, PSB you can maintain up to 10 to the power of 8 or 7, expiry should be um when uh, it reaches to the population size less than 10 to the power of 5 or 4 uh, uh, during nearby 4 to 5 months the population size will be reduced then initially when we are going to prepare the population size should be 10 to the power of 7 colony forming units then permissible contaminants no contaminants are um, allowed at the uh, dilution of 10 to the power of um, 8 if we uh, see in the 10 to the power of 5 dilutions, it should not show any contaminants. No contaminants should be there in the <coughs> biofertilizer uh, preparation. Then the pH should be maintained 6 to 7.5. Then strain should be so specific. You should uh, check the purity. Serologically, you can check the um, quality of the biofertilizers. The carrier should be uh, passed through the sieves uh, from 150 to two, uh, 212 uh, micron sieves uh, you can use uh, to pass these carrier materials. Then uh, when we are going to talk about the different biofertilizers for nitrogen, because we, uh, our um, uh, rhizobium should uh, fix the nitrogen for that purpose, we can confirm with the nodulation test uh, the rhizobium, whichever we are releasing in the commercially in the market should be having the capacity to fix the nitrogen. We can confirm with the nodulation test. It should give the positive test. Uh, for astrobacter, nitrogen fixation not less than 10 milligram per gram of uh, sucrose, we have, whatever we are using for uh, preparation of broth. Uh, for uh, adospirillum, uh, it should provide the white pellicles in um, uh, 
nitrogen free uh, bromothymal blue media at 10 to the power of 7 dilutions it should uh, form the pellicle formation uh, then uh, phosphate solubilizing uh, bacteria to confirm or to uh, check the efficiency of phosphorus solubilizing bacteria we can get the zones solubilized zones uh, for 12 millimeters medium at 10 to the power of 4 dilution if you diluted and you spread it on the plate it should show the solubilized zones uh, at minimum of 12 mm uh, 12 mm solubilization zone should be uh, provided in the media then only we can consider it is the effective uh, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria or phosphorus solubilizing fungi these are the uh, different criteria we have to check for the quality for every organism then only it will be released in the market after production of biofertilizers then the when we are going to produce the uh, specific biofertilizers uh, then we have to give the information certain information on the uh, biofertilizer packet the polythene bag should be of low density grade the thickness of the polythene bag should be around 50 to 75 microns. The package should be marketed with the name of the manufacturer. You, we have to specify the production unit name, then name of the product, strain number, which batch you are producing, the crops which we can recommend the particular biofertilizer. Then what is the method of inoculation? We are suggesting the farmer to inoculate then date of manufacturing and date of expiry, batch number, then what is the cost of biofertilizer, price you should mention, and full address of production unit we have to give. Uh, this information can be given to the farmer to uh, use perfectly and to get a good result from their biofertilizer packet. This is mandate uh, by a fertilizer order control uh, you, everybody should maintain all these details on the biofertilizer packet then only we can ask the farmer to buy the uh, biofertilizer packet when we go for the quality standards uh, we have to maintain the good quality for the biofertilizer production otherwise we have we have uh, act in indian government uh, we may be um, um, we may receive the penalty uh, if we are not maintaining the quality, uh, then uh, right type of microorganisms are uh, uh, definitely we have to use the right type of microorganisms. And um, the microorganism should be in active form and in desired numbers. This is the mandate for the quality. Uh, then quality of inoculants, uh, success or failure and uh, acceptance or rejection will be depends upon the quality. The controlled at various stages of the production we have to check the quality every time when we are going for the commercial production, during the production, then after marketing, then during the application also, we have to ensure the active form is present in the uh, biofertilizer packet or not. Otherwise, uh, it will uh, uh, give us a low grade biofertilizer, then uh, the producer will get penalty by the act produced by the uh, Indian government. Then regular inspections, uh, uh, inspections should conduct uh, for control the uh, contaminants. Uh, we have to check with the identification of strains, uh, whatever they have mentioned, whether it is rhizobium leguminosarum or brady rhizobium japonicum. If we talk about the pre-living nitrogen fixing bacteria, they have to mention specific species and genus. The genetic, gen, um, uh, density of the strains guaranteed means uh, according to the um, FCO specifications, uh, the population size, size should be 10 to the power of 7. Every time, whenever we are going to check the quality, it should, uh, it should have the 10 to the power of 7 quality forming units. The assessment of the main activity as affected indicators or biofertilizers. Then uh, evaluation of effect or target crops. We have to check with the different crops, whether it is increasing the growth rate or not nutrient absorption is taking place or not, for, we have to check um, every time. And uh, the biofertilizers, whatever we are releasing in the market or we are selling uh, from uh, the particular production unit, you should get a registration from uh, state government under the regulation. Then only uh, the marketing will be possible for uh, production and marketing of biofertilizer in uh, different states. 
these are the regulations one should maintain for uh, uh, production and uh, uh, selling of bio fertilizers in the market okay uh, when we talk about the production of bio fertilizers uh, sorry uses of bio fertilizers different application methods uh, we can use uh, for um, uh, uses of bio fertilizers seed treatment or seed pelleting root dip method or um, uh, set treatment uh, mostly we will use for set treatment sugarcane crop and soil application uh, mostly the seed treatment uh, uh, method is very efficient because along with our uh, crop uh, the bio fertilizer can grow and colonize the roots and it will give maximum uh, potential uh, during the seed treatment if uh, some uh, crops uh, seed treatment may not be possible where we are growing um, uh, nursery first and after that we are transplanting in the main field there we can recommend uh, for root dipping method uh, for mostly rice crops or uh, chilies tomatoes or some vegetable crops where we are going for main uh, plant transplantation uh, then set treatment uh, specifically i told it's uh, uh, suits for um, sugarcane then soil soil application is a general recommendation for horticulture crops, plantation crops, or um, all the um, commercial crops. We are recommending soil application because uh, some of the farmers uh, uh, farmers uh, were uh, discussing about the drawbacks. Uh, uh, if they, uh, for example, if you take the cotton crop, they see they will get the seed after treating with the pesticide gaucho treatment that's why they are a little bit worried that's why we are recommending the farmers uh, go for the soil application uh, you can um, recommend mainly by seed treatment or soil application if they are going for the soil application uh, whenever they are going the uh, they will uh, sow the crop that time if you recommend it will be the best application method when compared to the um, other uh, methods we can see one by one. Uh, first, uh, uh, seed treatment method. Street, uh, seed treatment method is most common method adopted for all types of inoculants. The seed treatment is effective and economic because we are going to use um, um, the quantity of bio fertilizer is less here. For one acre of seed, we are recommending 250 grams if they are not treated by the pesticides. If they are treated, already treated by the pesticides or fungicides, then we can recommend for one acre of seed, we are recommending 500 grams of the biofertilizers or double dose of biofertilizer we can recommend to treat. Then uh, when we go for the seed treatment, uh, uh, you can see here the picture. Uh, first, you have to uh, spread the gunny bag. On top of that, you can add uh, it was seed uh, for one acre of uh, soil uh, field. Then on top of that, you can add your carrier-based biofertilizer or liquid-based biofertilizer. Whenever we are going to uh, do the seed treatment, we are recommending to add 10% of jaggery solution or starch solution or um, locally available Arabic gum can be used to, to treat the biofertilizer to the seed. First, you have to spread the gunny bag. On top of that, you can spread the seed, whichever you want to treat. Then you can add on the top of the seed, uh, the biofertilizer, carrier-based or liquid biofertilizer. And you can add 10% of any um, sticker uh, to stick the biofertilizer on the surface of the seed. Then you can uh, uh, mix the carrier-based biofertilizer or liquid-based biofertilizer to the seed as it uh, make the coat of the biofertilizer on the seed surface and leave for 30 minutes under shade, then you can sow immediately in the field. You should not give the waiting period for 24 hours or 48 hours before treating or after treating 30 minutes, you should sow the crop. Otherwise, the microorganisms load will be reduced. After, uh, after uh, seed treated uh, biofertilizers, you have to shed dry for 30 minutes, then immediately you can sow the crop, sow the seed. 
this is the method of seed treatment uh, when we are going to treat the uh, seed with different uh, uh, inoculants like uh, fungicides or pesticides or uh, bio inoculants you have to remember first you have to treat with the fungicide then after that you have to treat with the insecticide after 24 to 48 hours gap maximum minimum of 48 hours gap you can treat the bio inoculants like bio pesticides or uh, bio fertilizers um, after 48 hours treatment of insecticide uh, of fungicides and pesticides this is the procedure we have to follow for seed treatment Then set treatment, uh, we can uh, go for the set treatment. Uh, uh, Acetobacter can be used uh, for nitrogen fixation and phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. Prepare the culture suspension by one kg of biofertilizer with 40 to 50 liters of water, one is to 50 ratio. And you can dip the um, cutted pieces of uh, sugar cane or sets. And uh, you can uh, uh, leave for 10 to 20 minutes. After that, you can uh, remove and you can uh, transplant it. Then seedling dip method, uh, we can mostly use for rice crops or uh, chili or tomato crops. The seedlings are uprooted from nursery and clean their roots in water, dipped in the solution of biofertilizer and kept in at least 20 minutes and transplant immediately in the main field. The ratio of adding, one is to 10 ratio, you can add the biofertilizer to the water. For root dipping, dissolve the one packet of biofertilizer with 20 liters of water, 200 to 300 plants. One packet in two liters is sufficient to treat the 200 to 300 sets under cutting methods. These are the different uh, seedlings you can use. Uh, for remembering, you can use one packet of any biofertilizer. You can use 20 liters of water and mix it well, and you can dip your roots for 20 minutes and you can transplant in the main field immediately. Then for soil application, the mixture will be made up of biofertilizer, uh, then well decomposed compost, or if the compost is not available, you can use the black soil or sand, mix thoroughly, and uh, you can apply soil application before transplanting. The mixture of biofertilizers uh, can be applied in the field. For uh, doses of application or uh, for preparation of uh, soil um, inoculum, you can use two kgs of biofertilizers or one kg of biofertilizer. You can mix with the 100 kgs of compost or well decomposed compost. You can mix it thoroughly and you can apply in the field. If you are using 200, because 2 kgs of biofertilizer, we are recommending for 1 acre of uh, land, 2 kg of biofertilizer you can use. You can mix with 200 kgs of farmyard manure. If you have time, 15 days, you can um, allow them grow and uh, after that you can apply in the field. Uh, some disadvantages are there uh, with biofertilizer technology. Biofertilizers require special care for long-term storage because uh, they are having the live microorganisms. It must be used before their expiry date because whatever the expiry date they have mentioned, uh, we should uh, use before that. Otherwise, it may not be active form. It may not give any result. It must be used. Uh, uh, it should not contaminate with... Uh, other um, microorganisms, if other microorganisms are contaminated, the carrier medium, if uh, or if grow also, use the wrong strain, they are not as effective. That's why mostly if we are unable to maintain the quality, there is no uh, growth in the plant or we cannot see the nodule, form nodule formation in particular legume crops. Biofertilizers lose their effectiveness if the soil is too hot or dry or if you are using any problematic soils, the biofertilizers may not sustain and uh, it will not colonize the plants. That's why the soil conditions are uh, uh, should be very optimum. If the soil is having or fields are having more organic matter, it will be easy to sustain by the microorganisms. The pH should be always neutral 
a uh, neutral ph allows the growth of microorganisms and it will give uh, good uh, uh, efficacy in uh, particularly neutral soils this with regard to the uh, application methods and mass production um, still now if you have any doubts uh, uh, you can ask students um, did you get uh, all these points do you have any uh, doubts i am free to uh, explain you can ask me any doubt students Shreya? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any doubt? Uh, can you ask me the doubt? Your volume is very less here. No, ma'am. No doubt. Eh? No, ma'am. No doubt. Okay, okay. Uh, then uh, uh, one more uh, lecture I am going to talk. Um, what are the uh, quality parameters we have to maintain for each bacteria? Uh, what are the standards we have to maintain? Government, ha government has given one gazette notification. I am going to discuss uh, about the um, gazette notification. What are the quality parameters we have to maintain for each microorganism? Uh, just um, I'll take for 15 minutes and I'll close it. Can you see my uh, screen? FCO specifications and quality control of biofertilizers. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. In uh, biofertilizer production, uh, 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 production, the main uh, target is we have to maintain the um, quality if you compromise with the quality there is no market for your your product that's why uh, so many specifications has given uh, different governments then every manufacturer uh, can claim you know, whatever the product they are producing they have to maintain the active form and uh, the population size should be maintained that is called as quality control uh, the quality control methods determine the number of bacteria within the inoculants, uh, we have standardized numbers are uh, there. Uh, and then when we are talking about the efficiency of the particular microorganisms, the measured bacterial number commonly, uh, we can um, study by the uh, common methods of plating methods. Uh, you can use spread plate method or uh, pore plate method. Or um, for azospirillum, we can use most probable number method for uh, enumeration. And you can uh, use the viable count methods and you can maintain the population size. Then many developed countries, uh, um, they have their own uh, quality parameters. Uh, 
first of all uh, everyone uh, started using uh, or preparing the rhizobium they have given the population size of rhizobium will be uh, uh, rhizobium uh, will uh, tend to the power of seven to seven uh, colony forming units for uh, one gram of inoculants then um, different countries have different standards uh, um, uh, in canada they will maintain 10 to the power of 3 to 10 to the power of 5 nodulating rhizobia for seed or 10 to the power of 11 rhizobia for a hectare of land currently there are only two research stations in canada which routinely evaluate the inoculants quality and uh, they will publish uh, their results annually and um, in Australia, they permit, uh, permit low level of contaminants, 0.1 percentage of the total bacterial population. But at the same time, they require high population levels of rhizobium. Even some developed countries have very high standards for inoculants. In Rwanda, if you see uh, the population, they will not, um, uh, they will maintain the pure conditions. Only they will allow 0.001 percentage of contaminants are allowed. But it is doubtful whether these high standards are enforced or not. We are unable to get the information. And surprisingly, USA and UK, they don't have any regulations with regard to the biofertilizers, perhaps because there have been no reports adverse effects towards the biofertilizers. That's why the use of biofertilizers in the country has got momentum now because everyone started producing these biofertilizers. <laughs> Sometimes they are telling these biofertilizers are uh, having more contaminants. They are not maintaining the <coughs> quality. Previously, they have given amendment during 1959 and during 1985. We have commercially started during 1959, but the amendment has come um, uh, during uh, 1985. First amendment has come uh, how to produce the biofertilizers and what are the quality standards one should maintain. But uh, because of increasing uh, uh, the production rates and everybody is targeting the production of biofertilizers, there is much demand for biofertilizers. That's why in 2021 July, uh, they have uh, changed the regulations and they have given strict uh, um, amendments uh, to follow the quality of biofertilizers. Uh, that's why everyone should uh, maintain the quality. Uh, they have to ensure their uh, quality, whatever the product they are producing. A Quality Control Act is in Act 2 consider uh, consideration by the government. The existing BAS standards and proposed standards for different kinds of biofertilizers uh, are given below. Uh, um, uh, efficacy test can be uh, studied by the pot culture technique or field efficacy. I told Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Department of Agriculture Cooperation and uh, Farmers Welfare, they have given order in New Delhi the 1st July 2021. We have to follow all these amendments uh, while producing these biofertilizers. In exercise of the powers conferred by the Section 3 of the Essential Commodities Act 1955, uh, 10 of 1955, the central government hereby makes the following orders for the to amend the fertilizers, inorganic or organic or mixed of fertilizers, control order 18, 1985. Now they have uh, 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 reinforced to follow the 2021 guidelines. These are the standards by the 2021 guidelines. Each organism, they have given the specifications. Uh, how much population we have to maintain. Uh, the first biofertilizer, um, rhizobium, the count should be 5 into 10 to the power of 7 cells per gram of uh, carrier-based biofertilizers or any granules or carrier material or per gram capsule content in gelatin-based. If you uh, if uh, you are using the gelatin-based or uh, uh, then the population size should be 1 into 10 to the power of cells per ml of liquid also. Liquid biofertilizers also gaining importance now uh, because uh, we are using in fertigation. Um, uh, fertigation, um, we are recommending these liquid biofertilizers. The dose of fertigation is we are recommending uh, half liter, 500 ml of uh, liquid biofertilizer, which is having 10 to the power of 11 cells, a uh, minimum of 10 to the power of 8 cells. We are recommending 500 ml to 1 acre of land. 
the specifications are uh, given for rhizobium the liquid biofertilizer should contain 1 into 10 to the power of 8 cells the carrier biofertilizer should have the 5 into 10 to the power of cells the contaminant levels it should not contain any contamination at 10 to the power of 5 dilutions the ph should be 6.5 to 7.5 the efficiency character when we talk about the rhizobium, it should have effective nodulation if you check with the particular crop, all species listed on the packet and there should be minimum of 25% increase in dry matter yield in test plant after 25 days after sowing when tested as for the method given under controlled conditions. Mm, this uh, the efficacy uh, test we can conduct and we can specify the quality if any uh, quality lacuna is there, then uh, uh, these uh, producers will be penalized. This is the information already I have discussed. We have to give on the packet. The next uh, biofertilizer is Astrobacter. The colony forming units minimum should have 5 into 10 to the power of cells per gram of uh, powder or granules. In liquid, it should have 1 into 10 to the power of 8 cells per uh, ml. The contaminant levels at 10 to the power of 5 dilution, no contaminants are allowed. The pH should be 6.5 to 7.5. The efficiency character for astrobacter is the strain should be capable of fixing at least 10 milligram of nitrogen per gram of sucrose consumed in the broth. This is the efficacy test one should test for the astrobacter. Then we have to check for the nitrogen fixation efficiency. The minimum amount of nitrogen fixed by Astrobacter crucocum shall not less than 10 milligram per gram of per gram of sucrose utilized. Uh, then, because uh, so many production um, uh, uh, production people are uh, claiming that Astrobacter is having other plant growth promoting capacities, that's why we we have to test for germination test. Astrobacter inoculant should be effective for germination of seeds. It will improve the germination uh, capacity as well as the plant or root heights. Then for Astrobacter, total viable count 5 into 10 to the power of cells. Uh, I have already discussed about the Astrobacter. Then Azospirillum, the third uh, inoculum is Azospirillum. The maximum size should be 5 into 10 to the power of cells for a gram of um, carrier or any granules. In liquid, it should have 1 into 10 to the power of 8 cells per millimeter. Contaminant levels, no contaminants at 10 to the power of 5 dilution. pH should be 6.5 to 7.5. Efficiency character, um, formation of white pellicle in semi-solid nitrogen free bromothymal, bromothymal blue media. It should produce the pellicle formation. Then uh, the, first, uh, the fourth biofertilizer uh, we are uh, producing mainly from the production units are phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. Total viable count should be 5 into 10 to the power of cells per gram of uh, any carrier. In liquid, it should be 1 into 10 to the power of 8. The contaminant levels, no contaminants uh, should be present at 10 to the power of 5 dilution. pH should be 6.5 to 7.5 for moist or dry powder. If you're talking about the granulated carrier based, the pH should be 5 to 7.5 for liquid based biofertilizers. The efficiency character for phosphorus solubilization, the strain should be capable of solubilizing at least 30 milligrams per liter of phosphorus when we go for the qualitative test in liquid broth. When tested as for the method given using tricalcium phosphate or aluminum phosphate or iron phosphate, as phosphate sources. We can use different sources for uh, solubilization test. We can use tricalcium phosphate or aluminum phosphate or iron phosphate or any uh, phosphate sources we can use as insoluble sources. And uh, the particular microorganism should solubilize 30 milligrams. That will be marketed in the, uh, as a phosphorus uh, solubilizing microorganism. Then the fifth uh, production, um, Bio producing biofertilizer is mycorrhiza. Mycorrhizal mass production, uh, we need the live host. If you have the mycorrhizal spores, we can uh, do the infections to the sorghum grains or maize grains. Uh, you can treat the maize seed or sorghum seed. You can grow up to 40 days in the pot uh, by using sand. 
then you can collect the inoculum and uh, you can collect the root bits and you can mark it as a inoculum. In mycorrhizal uh, biofertilizers, the total, total viable spores gram uh, or product is minimum 10 viable propagules should be there uh, for one gram of finished, uh, finished product or um, inoculum, whatever we are preparing or whatever we are releasing in the market. The pH should be 6 to 7.5. The inoculum potential we have to check at 1200 IP per gram uh, infection propules per gram of finished product by most probable number, we have to check the efficiency. It's tenfold dilution. Then uh, sixth one is potassium mobilizing bacteria. The viable count should be five into 10 to the power of seven per gram for car carrier. For liquid, it will be one into 10 to the power of eight. pH should be 6.5 to 7.5. Contamination level, no contamination at 10 to the power of five dilution. Uh, the, it will differ from the efficiency character when we go for the potassium and zinc solubilizing bacteria. The strain potassium solubilizing bacteria or mobilizing biofertilizers, the strain should be capable of solubilizing at least 20 milligrams per liter of potassium and liquid broth when tested as for the method given using aluminum potassium silicates as a potassium sources. The zinc solubilizing bacteria, the population level should be 5 into 10 to the power of 7 cells. In liquid, it should be 1 into 10 to the power of 8 cells. No contaminants at 10 to the power of 5 dilution. The pH should be 6.5 to 7.5 for carrier based in the form of powders or granules. In liquid based, the pH should be less 5 to 7.5. The efficiency character, the strain should be capable of solubilizing at least 20 milligrams per liter of zinc in liquid broth when tested as for the method given using zinc oxide or zinc carbonate or zinc phosphate as a zinc sources. Acetobacter, mostly this acetobacter we are going to recommend for uh, sugarcane crop. Here also same population load we have to maintain 5 into 10 to the power of 7 cells for gram of powder, 1 into 10 to the power of 8 cells for, milli, uh, for ml of liquid. Contamination level, no contamination at 10 to the power of 5 dilution. The pH should be 5.5 to 6 for moist or dry powder granules or carrier based. For liquid, less pH we have to maintain for acetobacter because uh, uh, this is, um, it will produce the acetic acid. The pH should be 3 to 6. The efficiency character formulation of a yellowish pellicle in a semi solid medium. Uh, for efficiency check, we have to use for acetobacter. Then uh, nowadays we are popularizing as a consortium. Consortium, nothing but it's a mixture of cultures. Um, uh, it may contain two or more than two cultures. It may maintain in the consortium. Uh, when we are uh, producing the consortium, the individual organisms viable count should be minimum of uh, two or uh, one or two, um, maximum three of following microorganisms should be there. The colony forming units, one into 10 to the power of cells per gram. Colony forming units, minimum of PSB, one into 10 to the power of seven cells per gram. KRB or KSB 1 into 10 to the power of 7 cells per gram. Total viable count should be 3 into 10 to the power of 7 cells per gram of carrier per powder. A efficiency character, the efficiency character of individual microorganisms to be determined as I mentioned in case of individual microorganisms. Means if we go for the phosphorus solubilization, it should solubilize 30 milligrams. If you go for the phosphorus or zinc solubilizing bacteria, it should uh, solubilize 20 milligrams minimum from the broth. Like that individual efficacy we have to maintain for checking the quality in consortium. Then liquid consortium, uh, the liquid biofertilizers uh, can be prepared by using different cell protectants. Uh, we can use uh, uh, one percentage of PVP solution or trehalo solution uh, or glycerol. We can use as a protect cell protectants. Because of uh, producing this liquid biofertilizers, we can improve the shelf life of uh, one year to two years, and we can reduce the maintenance of um, carrier based um, or carrier because uh, if you use the carrier based biofertilizer, the shelf life is very less. That's why nowadays um, in market they are uh, popularizing the liquid biofertilizers. Liquid consortium, uh, we, if we are pre preparing for uh, we can prepare the liquid consortium 
with two or more than two microorganisms uh, like rhizobia, mastrobacter, or azospirillum. The population size should be five into ten to the power of cells per mil per ml. If we go for the phosphorus solubilizing bacteria or uh, potassium solubilizing bacteria, it may be five into ten to the power of seven uh, for PSB and KSB. The viable count of all the biofertilizers in the product, uh, minimum of one point five into ten to the power of five, ten to the power of eight cells per milliliter, and then pH should be five to seven. The contaminant levels, no contaminants observed uh, at a 10 to the power of 5 dilutions. The efficiency character, whatever we have studied for individual biofertilizers, same will be holds good here. We have to maintain the good cultures and good consor consortium with the uh, pure cultures. Uh, then it will give the efficacy uh, when we use this liquid consortium in different crops. And then um, they have given amendments tolerance limits for biofertilizers. In case of rhizobium, astrobacter, azospirillum, phosphate solubilizing bacteria, potassium mobilizing bacteria, and zinc solubilizing bacteria, the total viable count shall not be less than 1 into 10 to the power of 7 cells, colony forming units for 1 gram of carrier material in the form of powder or granules. If you go for the 5 into 10 to the power of cells, uh, so 10 to the power of 7 colony forming units for ml in case of liquid formulations. In case of consortium, the total viable count shall not be less than 1 into 10 to the power of 7 cells in case of carrier based, 1 into 10 to the power of 8 in case of liquid formulations. In mycorrhizal biofertilizers, total viable score shall not be less than 8 propagules per gram of finished product. These are the <clears throat> tolerance limits for biofertilizers. Uh, if we study the quality parameters, when we produce the quality product, it will give the good efficiency. Uh, we can see that much popularization is not there for biofertilizers because the production centers are not uh, um, maintaining the production uh, quality. It, uh, quality is substandard. That's why they made it uh, uh, amendment uh, during 2021 July. Uh, everyone who are going to follow these, uh, you know, produce these uh, biofertilizer products, uh, produce, they should maintain all these tolerance limits. Uh, then only it will be um, liable uh, to sell in the market. These with regard to the biofertilizer specifications. If you go for the production of phosphorus solubilizing fungi, uh, these uh, fungi having the specific um, uh, quality parameters. The spore counts minimum, if, for example, if you are producing phosphorus solubilizing fungi like uh, Aspergillus sevamori or Trichoderma viridi or any consortium for, for uh, decomposing, then we have to maintain this um, spore count for phosphorus solubilizing fungi. We have to maintain 1 into 10 to the power of 6 spores for gram of minimum 1 into 10, uh, 10 to the power of 7 viable fungal spores for 1 ml of the liquid. Uh, the contaminant level will be nil at 10 to the power of 3 dilutions. And then preparation, the pH of the liquid will be 3.5 to 5.5. Carrier, uh, it should be 6 to 7.7. Efficiency character, we have to study the solubilizing capacity of the particular strain, 30 milligrams per liter of phosphorus in liquid broth. When tested as for the method given using tricalcium phosphate or aluminum phosphate or iron phosphate as insoluble sources. This with regard to the phosphate solubilizing fungal biofertilizers. Uh, this with regard to the different specifications we have to maintain. Uh, with this, uh, I can conclude uh, my talk. Uh, we could discuss uh, what are the procedures, carrier-based biofertilizers, uh, mass multiplication, how we can multiply, uh, and how we can screen for different efficiencies, uh, efficient strains, strain selection, here, straight, uh, strain selection is a little bit uh, uh, critical. For each microorganism, you have to isolate and get pure culture. And uh, you have to expose all the cultures or screen for particular tests. For example, nitrogen fixation, you can go for the acetylene reduction assay test and you can study the efficiency of the particular organism and you can release as a good nitrogen fixer in the market. For phosphorus solubilization by, uh, bacteria or potassium or zinc, you have to check the solubilization zones for quality. And for quantity, 
you can supplement the broth particular broths with the insoluble sources and uh, you can test for the uh, solubilization of that insoluble sources and you can uh, measure with the spectrophotometry how much percentage of uh, solubilization you can find with the insoluble source and you can screen the particular organism if you go for the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria you have to test for all the uh, plant growth promoting iia production cytokinin production, gibberellin production. Then if you go for the antifungal, anti, uh, antibiotic characteristics, then you go for the dual culture technique. That's why you have to screen with the specific culture, uh, specific test, and uh, you can screen for all the microorganisms. Then you can uh, select the potential candidate for mass multiplication. You can mass multiply and uh, mix it with the carrier material and you can pack it. The packet can be preserved at uh, 30 plus or minus two degrees centigrade for six months for carrier and uh, for uh, liquid-based biofertilizers, we can uh, store up to two years. This with regard to the production and maintenance of mother cultures. Then with regard to the uh, quality specifications, Amendment was given during uh, 2000, uh, during 1985, but again they have um, changed the um, uh, recommendations and they have given recently 2021 July. And uh, everyone should follow all these quality parameters for production of biofertilizers. And they have given the tolerance limits also for biofertilizer production because. Um, Mm, uh, so many people, they have so many entrepreneurs or startup groups, they have started producing these biofertilizers. Much contaminants will be present. Sometimes uh, they are selling only carrier without any microbial uh, organisms. That's why uh, government, uh, central government is very strict uh, to find the quality of biofertilizers. That's why they have given these amendments. Everyone should follow these amendments to produce the biofertilizers. This, uh, with regard to the my talk, uh, with regard to the different topics I have covered uh, with short time, that's why I have rushed to explain. If you have any doubt, uh, I will share this um, um, PPTs with you. I can uh, send you uh, if you want these PPTs. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can ask within five minutes. I can explain if you have any doubts. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I thank our organizers. And Dr. Bose, he called me and asked me or requested me to take this class. I extend uh, uh, my um, gratitude towards all the organizers to give me the opportunity to share my views towards the biofertilizer production. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, students. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. No, ma'am. Do you have doubts? You can ask. You are free. You, you can feel free to ask the question. No, I'm no doubts. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I leave then, students? Hello. Hi, sir. Sir, yes, I have completed, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Thankful. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now, students are also only one student is there. So, okay. But uh, you have covered it uh, in a very comprehensive manner. So, I am thank very you, much thankful to you for that. Uh, <clears throat> on behalf of Mahatma Pule Krishi with the Petrauri, I am very much thankful to you, Trivani Madam, for kindly accepting our invitation and agree, <clears throat> giving you a precious two hours to guide our students on different aspects of uh, biofertilizers. So, thank you, sir. Yes, we will be uh, very thank grateful you. to you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank and you, sir. Stop here, ma'am. Uh, please uh, do share your PPT so that we will share it with our other students as well. Definitely, sir. Can you share your email ID, sir? Through email only, I can send it. Yes, yes, ma'am. I will. I will share. 
uh, Nanishwar has shared your email with me. So I will be contacting you on that email. Okay, okay, sir. Nice, nice to okay. talk to you. Sir, can I know your good name? Uh, myself, Manohar Dhadwad, madam. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We'll stop here. Thank you. Madam. Okay, sir. Thank you.